high octane action, lightning speed inputs, anger induced insomnia, and extra virgin olive oil. Today's video is not just about a game, but a lesson in the culinary arts. Cause today, my name is Chef Big Dog, and the dish of the day is high blood pressure. Just like the average side-scrolling advertisement nowadays, you won't last 10 minutes. In this kitchen, hotter than Gordon Ramsay's, the damn lamb sauce will be the least of your worries. Nah, there ain't no fire in my kitchen, man. It's just me. Now watch this. I'm gonna fry some frozen potatoes. Cook Serve Delicious 3, made with love, ginger, and a dream to cause as much anxiety as possible. Today's dish will be cooked faster than American Airlines Flight 11 hit the Northern Tower. But first, a lesson in common decency. For the love of God, stop posting pipe bomb tutorials in my Wikitubia page. I'm cooking up a storm, not cooking up somebody's home. Uh. Besides, have some common decency and use a VPN when you do it like the rest of us. Or just try nuclear fission because unlike bombs, this one is a blast that stays far after it becomes past. You know what I mean, huh? Yeah! I'm talking big boob! Oh yeah! Now, let me be clear. Cook Serve Delicious 3 is today's subject. It's not easy to use game tags to describe because it's, uh, it's one of those games that has the <laughs> difficult tag right next to the... <laughs> The casual one. Play it on standard mode and it's gonna be a difficult, fast-paced typing game with a bit of strategy. For example, think of it as driving down the road at 200 km per hour. Now ask yourself, what is a strategic tool to be used at this point that can make things a lot more fun? That's right, isopropyl alcohol. Unfortunately, you're not the one driving. You're the chef in the back of the food truck that's currently barreling down the highway at a definitely law-breaking speed. And your job is to sate the masses, to fight back the hungry hordes even while your food truck is getting gunned down. And you better not slow down, because if Karen doesn't get her chicken nuggets in the next 15 seconds, she's gonna do worse than what bullets can do. She's gonna leave a negative review. One mistake is all it takes for your gold medal to turn into a silver medal, then comes depression, and then comes the beginning of your career as an esports Twitch streamer. The game, first and foremost, is a typing game. Even though you can use your mouse to play the game, don't do it. Trust me, I used to do it, and I would aim for gold medals too. And one day, after an especially heated session, I woke up to find that my mouse is calling for backup, emailing me a discount code to a cremation service and a recommendation, evaluating my life to be equivalent to that of a summer ant. So don't use your mouse, because eventually you're gonna get to the harder routes that force you to use extremely difficult recipes where the ingredient list is so long that sometimes it goes off the UI. But first, let me tell you about the story of the game. Not because it matters, but because an airplane gets to have a very intimate relationship with the tower. In an alternative universe known as the United States, the year is 2041. Silk Song and Hightail are yet to be released. Hey, hey, the game's definitely weird. Oh, dude, check it out. They're offering cryogenic freezing services. That's crazy, man. Hey, at this pace, I might be able to check out the game right before my bones fossilize inside the casket. Where the fuck is the game? Business is booming, and the culinary industry is more competitive than ever before. It's no longer just a battle of the taste buds. As light machine guns get introduced to the mix, so too will the number of gangs increase locally. And they can get very territorial, even trying to run you off the road when they see you approaching their territory. But the battle is not just physical, not just spiritual, but it's also digital. Hacking your restaurant management software, stealing all customer data and modifying the login system to require you to link your PlayStation Network account. Naturally, all customers will cease to use the online function. In the fantasy world of the United States of America, the line between the culinary and military industry draws thinner every day. And amidst all the competition, you exist as a chef, but not just any chef. You are the chef for Cook Serve Delicious, highly regarded as the finest restaurant in the world. Or at least it was, until United Airlines Flight 175 gave the restaurant a small kiss on the cheek. 
a miracle takes place and you get rescued by two semi-sentient AI robots. You survive the catastrophe with only a couple scratches and a mild brain hemorrhage. Having had just lost the restaurant that you've worked so hard to build up for so many years, you are now at the bottom of the bucket. However, at the lowest of lows, remind yourself that it's not over just yet. The robots offer their truck and their help. One more drive and the other defends from incoming Texan hospitality. You accept and from there your journey begins. To reclaim your place, not just as the greatest chef that the world has ever seen, not just as the greatest food truck to ever re-rend a family of five, but also to rebuild your restaurant. Don't worry man, we got this fish right out of a radiated lake. I was wearing a hazmat suit and the hazmat suit melted off of my body. Here you go man, enjoy, fucking die. Cook serve delicious three, best served with a side of wrist rotation exercises to help with the imminent carpal tunnel syndrome. At this point, you already know what this game is about. You cook some food and burn the rest. You serve the food and shortly after handing it over, realize that the customer did not order a piece of charcoal. And, let's get in with it, but you're and then you hope to live long enough to hear the customer saying, mm -mm. God damn, that's delicious! Hey, compliments to the chef, man! It's currently 4 in the morning. I just redid the script for the third time this night. And in two hours, I'll be on a 48 hour drive where I won't get a lick of sleep. So whatever script I end up with now, I'm not redoing it. And what's a better time than now to explain things in such a refined technical detail that it quite literally does not fit on a game review video. Instead, it becomes more of a tutorial. A documentary, so to say, on the complexity of the human mind and how one's mannerisms and abilities can shift significantly should the right effects take place. Here's a 9,000 word article about that. Anyway, uh, the script here says to kill yourself. I don't feel like doing that today, so instead, uh, what the fuck is this video about? Ah, uh, that's right, a cooking game. Okay. <clears throat> Like any stuffed crust pineapple pizza being force-fed to an Italian man, it only tastes better when you know how it works. So naturally, as a person looking to fulfill their potential, you will now be gaslit into finding out how this game works. To begin, let's get familiar with the keybinds. The keyboard buttons required to control things are always written on your screen. For example, these are your whole storage units. Each one of them has an assigned function key. Click once on an empty unit to choose what to cook. Click twice on an occupied unit to serve it to a Myconite colony. <laughs> food in a holding storage eventually expires. Unlike the food in a special order, which seems to have an immortality spell on it. This is probably the most cancer causing order I've ever seen. Hey, come on, wait around a bit more. Don't worry, we packed this bad boy with so many preservatives, you can come back here in a month and it'll still be fresh. And uh, hey, actually, if you don't get a couple tumors after eating this, then we guarantee your money back. Come on, bro, come on. These are the preparation stations. In other words, your customer's orders. You can cook or serve an order by clicking the key that it's bound to. This is handy to know, of course, so that you can understand what went wrong when the customer orders a well done steak and you accidentally serve it to him microseconds after you put it in the oven. And now for the very first step of starting any run, filling in the menu. There are two kinds of foods that you can add, hold storage and special orders. Special orders, denoted as SO, will be the main reason on why you keep getting silver medals and a food container as your sleep paralysis demon, but we'll get into that later. Hold storage foods are denoted as HS. Red HS means that it requires the food to be first prepared in a hold storage unit whereas yellow means that it's optional and therefore can be cooked on demand. HS foods is what the customer will order at every food stop, unlike special orders which are only ordered when you are most vulnerable. Holy fuck, slow down on the driving, I'm not ready yet! Oh really? Oh, just a little bit? Oh, thanks for telling me, man. I had no clue. It is generally recommended that you don't cook on demand if you can avoid it. Because if you do so, that means you have to pay attention to when it's done cooking. And if you fail to pay any attention, 
then prepare yourself for the world's first impromptu food truck gender reveal party. To help avoid this, your robot co-workers can be used to automatically serve the food. This only works on orders that are ready to be served. When choosing any route, the game will prompt you with a choice between standard and chill. In chill mode, customers will have enough patience to rival a Buddhist monk. However, you will only be able to get up to a silver medal. Whereas in standard, Karen will want her sushi and she will want it in 30 seconds. And God forbid if you take more than 30 seconds, because if you do, expect bullet holes in your food truck and a silver medal at the end of the run. The numbers and colors of every recipe denotes the difficulty of that recipe. For example, cinnamon buns are ranked as zero difficulty. To make it, you only have to place down the cinnamon buns and press enter. And once it's done cooking, you'll have four types two servings whereas ramen a difficulty 5 recipe requires ramen oil bacon and whatever the fuck that is once selected press enter congratulations you have just finished the first stage of cooking once it's done cooking it's time for the assembly phase just as the ingredient list says select bacon mystery ingredient number five then go to the next page cabbage, boiled eggs, then go to the final page, select scallions and togarashi, then serve, and you will have yourself three noise complaints from the neighbors. Because in your rush to assemble the orders, you accidentally put in a boiled egg. <laughs> Usually, any normal person would appreciate a couple curly fries in the french fries that they ordered, or in this case, a fucking egg in the damn ramen. But this game takes place in the imaginary world of the United States. And in there, every customer expects complete and pure perfection, and any slight mishap will result in you getting a silver medal or worse at the end of the run. And if you're thinking, hey, it's just boiled eggs, why not take it out of the soup? Well, in the eldritch world of the United States, that's simply impossible. In the wise words of my crack addicted uncle, if you're gonna fuck up, then you better fuck up so hard that any chance of recovery becomes completely impossible. You're gonna wanna choose the difficult recipes because the more difficult it is, the more XP you get. The more XP you get, the higher your level. And with every level, you get a skill point that allows you to modify your food truck in various ways. More holding stations, patient customers, more slices in a pizza, reinforced bulletproof windows, cybersecurity software, and more. Holy shit! What is that speed? Ah! In all honesty, the game is fairly repetitive. There's over 300 levels and the main difference between them is what's available on the menu. There are some unique levels here and there, but that's it for the most part. Which leads us to the most important question of the video. So far, we're 11 minutes in on a video about a cooking game, which might lead you to then ask, what is this video? Is it a review? Is it a cry for help? Is it the results of some complicated mental gymnastics or is it a very sophisticated way to announce a Patreon? To that, I say, all of the above. But if you think that this video is unserious, that I'm simply uploading filler content while working on something else in the background, then let me assure you that this review is completely serious. That I really did spend many hours getting better at the game. That I would pick a menu of 30 points, reach a perfect combo of over 100, make one mistake, and then proceed to get shit docked by a bitch named Alexa. SHUT THE FUCK UP! Let me assure you that Flight 175 really did hit that tower. And if you try hard enough, you too can hit the tower. But to do so, you will have to push yourself. So without further ado, let's talk strategy. Since the food list is too long and this is definitely not a filler video, we're not gonna go over every one of them. Also partially mi minor, well, major, almost completely because I can only hold myself off of RuneScape for so long. Besides, your list of choices will change depending on the setting and sometimes you'll be bound to pick the hardcore stuff. Mmm, <sighs> smells like shit! Whatever my chickens! Nah man, all you're getting is a piece of bed from me, man. Fuck you. So, just like most paid courses on the internet, I'm gonna give you some general tips, a motivational speech, and a list of lawyers to contact for when you inevitably get arrested. We begin by throwing the mouse out the window. When you're in the kitchen, it's all keyboard or die. Just like the Polish restaurant down the road that's definitely not laundering money, we're gonna choose carefully what to put on the menu. What the fuck is this recipe? The main cause of difficulty is variety and controls. 
Some foods have two phases of cooking, the cooking phase and the assembly phase. Foods that vary in both phases should be avoided at all costs, because muscle memory is a lot easier to develop than hand-eye coordination. And since the game can have terrible default keybinds, I recommend the following keybinding method. The game will train you to input the first letter of every ingredient. So if there is two ingredients in the same page with the same starting letter, rebind both of them to their second letter. That way, you'll press the key that matches the first letter, see nothing happen, then press the key that matches the second letter, see something happen, assume you did it correctly, then serve, and then proceed to have the customer pay you in lead-based projectiles. Sometimes the game will give you two ingredients with the same first word or outright different words meant to be acronyms for the ingredient. For these situations, my strategy of dealing with it is to send multiple angry emails to the developer. That way, they won't do it again in the sequel. The worst kinds of mistakes to make are the ones where you don't know what went wrong. When you serve in a panic rush, a chicken breast so raw that it can probably be resuscitated by a competent vet, these are the mistakes that you need to work on and figure out immediately. More often than not, they'll be caused by terrible controls, but with enough weed, confidence, and a severe lack of self-awareness, you'll be able to fuck up and not feel bad at all. You won't always have an option with what to add to the menu, but when you do get to choose, aim for the easiest ones in the higher difficulties. Here's some of my recommendations. Start out by clicking on this gear icon and turning on one of the most critical pieces of detail that's off by default and never mentioned by the game itself. The day I found out about this, I nearly bought a 12-hour course on how to pilot a Boeing airplane so that I can express my gratitude to the developers and offer them the secrets to a good and healthy retrograde ejaculation. Anything with this icon means that it can be auto-served, which means that you can hold off of serving it and instead use the time to prepare for even more orders. And if it doesn't have the icon, that means you'll have to serve every order manually. For whole storage foods, if it has the icon, that means it's generally easy to do. As for special orders, we're gonna choose a... Uh... Karen wants her coffee and she wants it now. This better get out there before the building collapses. Uh... You know what? This isn't so bad. I could keep doing this for a while. Holy fuck! My nipples just fell off! What the fuck is this happening? Just like the one time the neighbor's kid called me bad at Mario Kart, we're gonna turn everyone's life into a living hell. We're gonna add to the mix what I like to call a healthy coping technique also known as cheat engine. When it comes to special orders, picking recipes that have two phases of cooking can be an advantage. Just try not to progress too many of them at once, or you might end up recreating Dante's Inferno in the food truck. Now for the list of lawyers to contact, well, it is with a heavy heart that I announce that in my attempt to retrieve real lawyers to contact, I've officially been served three cease and desists and two love letters calling me gay. Now that you know absolutely nothing on what to do when you get arrested, how about a motivational boost? Listen to this, I spent 20 minutes writing this at 4 in the morning. <clears throat> when you are at your lowest, when the world sends to you its worst cruelties, do not give up and do not reply with anger. Instead of being angry at the world and yourself, instead of giving up, on the path of achieving your dreams, be more like my uncle and do crack cocaine. Hyperfixation is my mental disorder and I choose high blood pressure as my coping mechanism. Oi! Hey! Slow down! Hey. I'm gonna kill myself if I fuck up here. You know, my favorite part about the cooking game genre is the nuclear war. It really adds that touch of war crimes that I think the genre was really missing. I've been saying this for a while now, you know. All a cooking game needed was a gun. Just imagine how competitive it would be. The soup of the day. Lead poisoning. I saw a picture of a creature looking like a CSD customer. Hold on. Look at this shit. The more and more I look at this image, I'm just reminded of that yellow M&M. should put a Glock on the menu. I just, the slogan would be the last bill you ever pay. I'm gonna need petrol instead of oil, but order number nine could suck my ass. I'm gonna need the fast food to get a lot faster. There's no fire, you just smell like shit. All good, all good, it's under control. It's all under control, it's under- Again! It's happening again! <laughs>
Fuck it, you haven't done anything yet. Wait a minute. <laughs> what do you want? Leave me alone! Yeah, yeah, place your orders. See what happened. Wait a second. Is that Northern Lion? I should've known it was him. I should've known it was that piece of shit. Oh, you motherfucker. Impressive as shit. You know what? No, I want to see this guy. Come on, go throw it up a video. Let me go. Did I screw up? Oh, I'm a five star chef. I don't need no ice cream, is just a bad pick anyway. Who cares? You know what? Here, I'm so good at the game that I can turn up the heat all the way and completely get away with it. Here you go, sir. Extra rat poison for you for putting a shoe at the bottommost layer, charging you double just for having a bad taste. It's a fucking cooking game! What do you want? Stop! Go away! Wait, wait, what are- Oh, hey, hey, no! Hey, no, stop! Hey, remember when I booted this game to relax? Yeah, you made a good order. Turn them back! Turn them back! Tell them there's no service! Oh, fuck! Shut the fuck up! Shut, shut the- We're selling really good charcoal tonight. One acid reflux bomb coming out. Hold on, I gotta shoot this duck. One second. Chemical weapons, I am producing. Let's see if we can get a patient zero with this one. To the fucker with the beard, you're getting bad too. Boys, I think it's getting a little hot in here. You know, the sun shines brighter every day. Today's happy will come with an explosive surprise. Bomb has been planted. Thanks for watching. I now have a Patreon. If you like these videos, you can now become a part of the problem. Instead of being a number on my screen, you can now be a number in my wallet. <laughs> Also, I have a message to the developers. Please give me a free copy of the remaster and and full ownership of the company. I want the I want the company. Please give me the company.